meeting, I'd like to call to order the January 24th, 2023 meeting of the City of West Palm Beach Historic Preservation Board. Can we please begin with a roll call? Amanda Skyer. Here. Kristen Kellogg. Here. Ken Breslauer. Here. Gabriel Jaroslavsky. Here. James Murphy. Here. Dan Pickney. Please let the record reflect that Don Pickney is not, Dan Pickney is not here. Todd McLean. Here. David Burke. Here. Please also let the record reflect that Donna Tomaszewski is not here. Thank you. We now move on to approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Do we have any changes to the agenda as presented? Okay, we don't have any changes from staff. Any changes by members of the board? Okay, can we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the agenda for tonight's Historic Preservation Board meeting. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. We now move on to approval of the minutes from the December 21st meeting. Any changes to the minutes as presented in your packet? Okay, may I please have a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes for the December 21st, 2022 Historic Preservation Board meeting. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. We now move on to the report of the Historic Preservation Planner. Good evening, Frederick Metner, City Historic Preservation Planner. Since the board last met, staff has had 78 level one applications, 36 zoning reviews, and completed four level twos. I also wanted to um, introduce you officially to Laura Hall, the board secretary. I apologize, I did not do that last month. And your new board member, David Burke. So we are a full board. We have uh, seven permanent members and two alternates. So I think we'll be all set with quorum moving forward. And um, the uh, other item on general presentations is for the storm of 28. So um, I'd like to present the group that has some um, a proposal uh, for this wonderful site that's both on the local and national register of historic places. And I will pull up there. Did you want the PowerPoint or PDF? Uh, PDF. Sorry. Sorry, for some reason I thought you had that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Jake Leone, and I'm here representing Frisbee Group. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to present to you guys today. Uh, I'll be presenting the Storm of 28 Memorial Park Monument. Uh, this is a collaboration between Frisbee Group, the Storm of 28 uh, Coalition, and landscape design firm Neovera Williams, uh, who's not here today. Um, so on our agenda, we'll, we'll first uh, talk about the storm itself and why it's historically significant to West Palm. And then we'll get into uh, the existing conditions of the site and show some imagery there and then talk a little bit about the design goals that we formed in-house and we'll show some renderings and then we'll get into the budget and you guys can ask questions after that. So what was the storm of 28 and how is it historically significant to West Palm Beach? I'm gonna invite Dorothy Hazard who's here representing the coalition and she's gonna talk a little bit about this and then I'll follow up with some additional information. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dorothy Hazard. I'm with the Storm of 28 Memorial Park Coalition, Inc. out of West Palm Beach. And uh, the founder, founder of our organization is Mr. Robert Hazard. Uh, we're pleased to be here and to have you listen to our presentation. The Storm of 1928 is very important, not only to Palm Beach County and West Palm Beach, but because it is the second national disaster in our nation. Over 3,000 people perished in that storm. And in reality, it was a hurricane, only they didn't call them hurricanes in those days, and they didn't name them. But the storm, as you know, the history, uh, it came ashore near the Jupiter Inlet and moved west over the Lake Okeechobee. And a lot of the people perished over there, Belglade and Pahokee. And 
we're here regarding that and the mass grave, the mass grave that has over 674 plus bodies in it that's located at 25th and Tamron Avenue in West Palm Beach. And it will be 95 years if this memorial monument is not in place before September the 16th, 2023. And there are two other uh, cemeteries, one in Martin County, Pahoka, Pahokee, uh, not Pahokee, excuse me, uh, uh, in Martin County that has a mass grave and the one in Woodlawn that has a mass grave and they received their memorial monuments right after the storm in 1928. So uh, Mr. the late Mr. Ed Goldston he designed the memorial monument with some survivors of the storm and people in the community and our founder and other people in our organization. Thank you. Thank you. So um, this just shows an image of the destruction that the storm caused back in 1928, just to just give you an example of you know how bad it really was. Um, so for the park itself, uh, I'm just gonna run through some existing conditions. Like Dorothy said, it's um, bound by Tamron and 25th Street. Um, this is a visual of it looking southeast. The gold star represents the general vicinity of the proposed monument. I'm just gonna uh, flip through these, just more drone images to give you an idea of the park. It's a little bit over four acres um, and there is some, uh, some markings of the grave site. Uh, this is an example of one of them. There's this historical uh, landmark um, you know, memo that explains the burial site and, and what it's from. And as Dorothy said, Ed Golson had originally come up with a concept um, and you know, had progressed it to a, a, a point and he unfortunately passed away a few years ago and we were asked Frisbee Group was asked to step in and uh, assist the coalition in progressing the design and helping to fundraise around that design and, and helping the coalition to take the, that design through the city process for approvals. Um, so we developed a framework and we wanted to follow certain goals that we had come up with internally. Uh, one of them being you know, honoring Ed Golson's original design intent uh, two, we wanted to make some, some changes to the overall experience that would optimize the visitor experience. Three, we wanted to enhance the park landscaping without disturbing the burial grounds you know, beneath, beneath the park. And four, we wanted to design it in a way that would minimize future maintenance and landscaping expenses for Parks and Recreation, who is going to be uh, maintaining the park going for forward. So this is just an example. Uh, of some of the material that Frisbee Group received. This is a, an original watercolor uh, from Ed Golson. You can see the, uh, the monument in the middle of the image right here. And uh, the rings are supposed to represent, you know, the rings of, of a hurricane. Um, and additional concepts that we received from uh, Ed Golson's original design. So, we took those, followed our design guidelines, and this is a, a rendering of, of what we've come up with today. This is a, a, that same rendering viewed, uh, you know, zoomed out a little bit. This is looking west. Um, and this is that same rendering uh, you saw two, two photos ago, but at night. And again, uh, from this zoomed out perspective, looking west. Uh, and just to hone in on some of the design attributes. Uh, so the monument itself, it's um, a black granite monument with uh, gold engravings sitting on a coral stone base. Uh, it's about nine feet at its tallest point. Um, on the front, there's a quote, uh, their eyes were watching God, a quote from Zora Neale Hurston's uh, book, and it really illustrates uh, what I would say is the, the chaos of this event and, and what ensued on this site in the aftermath. Um, 
on the back there's uh, a, the field of memories quote, which which really um, is is a quote that exemplifies how we should be honoring um, those buried beneath this park. You know, moving forward, and um, there's a kinetic hurricane emblem on the front. Um, and let's see. And just to continue, some of the landscape design attributes, the uh, stamped concrete, which I'll highlight, or sorry, this in the, um, where the, the monument sits, it's actually in the design of uh, the West African symbol for faith and hope. Um, just another attribute that we added uh, to the overall concept from uh, Ed Golson's original design. Um, and then there's sod berms that are supposed to resemble those hurricane bands that you saw in that original watercolor uh, and, and additional elements like pigeon plum trees, uh, the, the green island ficus hedge, uh, and then two pedestrian benches um, just to add that to that overall visitor experience. Um, so in terms of budget, we're at a total budget of just under 160K. As I mentioned, uh, the fundraising is lined up and ready to go. So next steps, we're just going to progress through the, the city approval process. And uh, we're meeting with Art Life and uh, City Commission next week. And from that point forward, we're just going to work to finalize the, the design and uh, go through the city permitting process and a bit of an aggressive timeline, but we're hoping to have everything uh, buttoned up and, and ready for that grand opening in, in September, which would be the 95th anniversary of uh, the storm of 1928. So thank you, and we'll take any questions. Thank you. Any questions by members of the board? Uh, yeah. I is there a site plan, an overall site plan, in context of where this is proposed? Uh, there is. Uh, it's not in this PDF that I sent to Historic Preservation, but I can send it around to the board after the fact if that would be helpful. Is there a specific question related to? Uh, no, I just was curious. And it's um, it's on 25th and Tamarind. 25th and Tamron Avenue. Do you know where the tire place is at the corner at the light of Tamron Avenue in West Palm Beach? Do you know where Australian Avenue is? <laughs> Australian Avenue, if you're going from Palm Beach Lakes going north on Australian Avenue to 25th Street, you make a right turn onto 25th, go across the railroad tracks on the right there. Uh, there's Windsor, and then at the traffic light, if you make that right turn, it takes up that whole lot there. If you look up at the map there that he's showing you, uh, that's where it is. And there are no headstones or anything like that because it's a mass grave and it's a papa cemetery. Uh, it does have like the historical marker. It has a memorial signage. It has a time cap capsule up there. It has two beautiful black columns that were brought over from Africa uh, that you could go through when you're entering into the area where the mass grave is, and the mass grave is marked off by uh, four 1928 uh, lettering on a black uh, broad fence, so that that way people will know that that is the mass grave where the bodies were just dumped. No ceremony, no identification, no last rites. Uh, all they received at that time was lime. Bodies covered up in lime to keep down from the disease that they didn't want to have an epidemic. Well, how did this um, partnership come about? I, I'm, I'm so happy to see that this site is, you know, being enhanced and receiving the recognition it deserves. It's a very important part of the history. And I think because it, of where it's located, it's not always at the forefront of their mind. And I think focusing on the visitor experience will certainly encourage more people to visit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I to be honest, I, this was the first project given to me when I started working for Frisbee Group two years ago. 
didn't ask many questions, just you know, started working on it. And I think um, in reality, we were asked to help and we decided to help. And uh, you know, a year and a half later, we've, we've progressed to this point and we're gonna see it through to the end, so. And are you, um, I assume, planning some sort of celebration or to, uh, to unveil the enhancements? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We're planning to have a ribbon cutting ceremony because it is a proper cemetery and we will not be digging the holy ground. And this memorial monument is just phase two. We do have a phase three concept. How oh, wonderful. So you'll be learning more about that. Mm -hmm. So is that a visitor center? Is that what I saw in the, in the rendering? The phase three, is that a building? Oh, the building, that is phase three, as you saw, projected as to what uh, the survivors, some of the survivors of the storm, the community people, and our coalition sat down and decided that that's the way they want it to look. It will be two stories. It will have a, a museum component in it where uh, we will learn about the artifacts and the stories of the migrant workers, the black pioneers. Also, we're gonna have a weather academy in there because that's part of our coalition goal is to tell people and inform them about the hurricanes. Uh, because you know in Florida, we do have quite a few that come our way. And so uh, we want to have a simulating chamber in that building so people can actually see the magnitude of a hurricane and let people learn about it. Also, we want to have a, a hurricane shelter and a facility there. Now, the hurricane shelter and facility will be in such a way that uh, if we, people have to utilize it, they will not be able to go into the museum aspect. Mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people, people are concerned about when you have a museum and you're having all of these artifacts and things in it. And not only that, we want to have technology, state-of-the-art technology and education because if you are familiar with that area, that's Pleasant City and Coleman mm -hmm. Park, and we do need to put something up in that area will be state-of-the-arts because when you think of the history that's involved in this, we will have people coming all over to see what we have here in West Palm Beach because no place in the world will they have what we would have here on this site. Well, that's wonderful, all the plans that you have. And will, you, will the Frisbee group be helping with phase three as well? Uh, to be decided, but I'm, we're happy to help where we can, yeah. I'm gonna add this, we're going to need help from everybody, city, county, state, uh, because I think in terms of now, our community is no longer when we used to say like three county, Broward, Miami, Palm Beach are going three up. Our community is the world now. And when you look at phase three for what we want there, we're going to need to network and uh, be available to any person, organization, group that will be willing to work with us. That's wonderful. Well, I, I think um, this has been a, a fruitful partnership and, and I hope you continue to build um, many more partnerships to realize your vision, as I think it's an important one for the community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, well, thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, I just wanted to, again, welcome David and Laura. Thank you so much. Um, and so I uh, will now uh, lead into the remarks of the chairperson. So I'm just gonna outline uh, how the meeting will operate. So for each project that comes before us, uh, that the applicant will first present. They'll have 10 minutes to do so. If there is a demolition involved, which I don't believe we have any on the agenda this evening, but if there's a demolition involved, they're allowed 15 minutes. After the applicant presents, uh, staff will, now, will present their presentation and we'll then open it up to public comment, which will be limited to three minutes per person. 
After public comment, we will go into executive session where we will render our decision. Uh, to lead into this, we need to let you know if we've had any conversations outside of this meeting. So we will now uh, declare any of our ex parte communications. Mr. Murphy, if you could please start. Uh, yes. Uh, as to the matters on tonight's Historic Preservation Board agenda, January 24th, 2023, I, James Murphy, have not had any ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As to matter of tonight's uh, items in the agenda, I, Gabe Charoslavsky, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As to the matters on tonight's agenda, I, Kristen Kellogg, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, and have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Amanda Skyer, I did speak with Ms. Mittner about all of the cases on tonight's agenda. I have not received written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit, and I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As, <clears throat> as to the matter of tonight's agenda, I, Ken Breslauer, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. As to uh, matters of tonight's agenda, I, Todd McLean, have had um, ex parte communications with case number 22-01. I did speak to the architect about some hardscape. As to um, all other items on the agenda, I have not had ex parte communications. I have not received communi written communications. I have not conducted an investigation. I have not made a site visit. And I have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. <clears throat> As to the matter of tonight's agenda, I, David Burke, have not had ex parte communications, have not received written communications, have not conducted an investigation, have not made a site visit, have not received expert opinions. I request that these disclosures and all written communications be made part of the record. Thank you. We now move on to the public comment portion of our meeting. If there's someone here to speak on an item that is not on the agenda, now is the time to do so. Chairperson, uh, it is my understanding that we do have a comment for uh, to be entered tonight. It is a comment on an agenda item that came before this board approximately two months ago. It is my understanding that it had come in, I think, after the agenda item was heard, but before last month's meeting, and it was my unintentional inadvertence that uh, it was not read, so I do apologize to the board and, and uh, to everybody here. So we will have it read tonight. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Um, I will read the uh, public comment. Uh, this comment is from George Harvey. Uh, I regard the case number 22-86 and 22-108 for 214 Lakeland Drive West Palm Beach, Florida, 33405. We would want to appeal the decision to approve the additions to the accessory dwelling. We did not receive the notice in a timely manner to attend the November meeting and oppose the re request. Per Florida code relating to historic properties, would the original owner upon return recognize the property? We would say no. The height and massing as well as in the setback is excessive. 
The unknown height of the main dwelling will be overshadowed by the height as well as the mass of the 600 square foot addition to existing ADU. From an abutting property in rear, with the mass being in the setback, the perspective will be as if we reside in a commercial zone. A massive vertical wall along the southern or northern property line. In addition, we know, per the property owner, he is and will be using this property for business purposes. The addition intent per the owner is not only personal but personal but commercial for employees and warehousing. Sunbiz EIN number 46-2426819, How I Roll Sports, LLC. And that was a comment from George Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. Is that just a matter of ma making it part of the record? That is correct. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if we've um, cited the date of the email. Uh, we received the email on December 21st, 2022. Thank okay, you. thank you. Is there any further public comment on an item not on the agenda this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the swearing in of our speakers. If you could please rise and raise your right hand if you will be speaking. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this proceeding will be truthful? I do. Thank you, please be seated. We have two continued cases. Our first case is case number 22-101-3120, Washington Road. Good afternoon. Uh, Daniel Menard of La Berge Menard. Um, we are the architects on the project. Um, when it says continuing project, I prior to our time, I think you had approved a house or looked at a house that was designed by another architect on this project on this uh, property so we were uh, retained to uh, come up with a different design and a different approach from the one that you had looked at uh, in the, in the past um, so where do I hit to oh I can do this one one second So essentially we're dealing with, um, so uh, the property is on Washington, and Washington is on the left side of the, the page, and you have the intercoastal on the right side of the page, north is at the top. So we, what we have at present is we have an existing, um, existing house that was built probably in the 20s, I believe, with a little shed. So it's essentially a little cottage that's extremely charming, and that is landmarked. So that uh, house is to be preserved, and also there's a shed with a little link that uh, links the shed with the, with the uh, co let's call it a cottage. So what the owner wants to do, the current owner, it wants to move the, um, the landmarked uh, cottage uh, closer to the street so that it becomes more in scale with the residences that are along Washington, and then build a new residence east of the, uh, the cottage and that new residents would be able to enjoy the view and the advantage of being on, uh, on the intercoastal. Uh, there's some driveways, a lot of trees that have been moved around, and if I'm not mistaken, the cottage is actually up in the air right now, waiting for a place to be uh, put down. Uh, the way we um, decided to lay the land is, that since the property has a peak on the west side, and is narrower on the east side, we decided to locate the, uh, the little uh, cottage on the north side. And that, what, what that does, it allows it to have its own private little area. It's almost like a separate house. And we are uh, saving it entirely. We are adding the little shed over here. And since it will be self-contained, we are proposing a small swimming pool so that this could be used by the family that owns the house and any guests would have their own little domain uh, or family would have their own little area separate from the main family. Um, then obviously we have to get from the street to the house. 
So by putting the driveway on the south side, it's the shortest distance between Washington and actually a house that would be placed to the east side. So we have a drive on the south, uh, drop off for a couple of cars that would be assigned to the, the guest house, and then we would drive up here, we would have a garage that would have a four car garage that would in fact be hidden from the street by the little shed and by the guest house. The new house sits, um, we have setbacks obviously of 15 and 10 feet, so we have a house that is uh, 69 feet wide, so it's very compact and we decided to use a st central staircase so that we can enjoy uh, views from almost every room uh, upstairs. Um, I will move to the next. So at a larger scale, if we focus on the main house, the uh, garage is on the north side. We have a connector from the garage to what would be uh, the kitchen area. We'd have a gym or a flex, what they call a flex room these days. Uh, kitchen, family room, uh, barbecue area that is outdoors. On axis on the center, so it's a very symmetrical house, we would have an entry, library on one side, stairs in the center, then dining area and entertainment area uh, that are north-south with doors that open all the way through. So you would have a very large uh, opening towards the intercoastal to enjoy the view. We have a bar on this area here, in this area, that matches the barbecue that is on the north side. And we have a large covered loggia uh, that offers protection. Sorry, oh. it's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> okay, so second floor. So the second floor, as I mentioned, is very compact. So the garage area would have only one story, so it's not too massive. We had considered putting bedrooms um, over the garage, but we convinced the owner that it's just simply too much and too massive. So this is a one story, and then the two story portion of the house is actually limited to the main house. So essentially we have four bedrooms facing the west, and we added balconies that project on the north and south side. So that any guest or any of the children living in the house could actually stand on the balcony and have a look east and northeast and uh, southeast to the intercoastal so that at least the, all in the entire family can enjoy some of the view. The master area is on the east side, so we have a master bedroom and then two bathrooms and the owners of the house, uh, the masters, could enjoy the, uh, this large terrace that faces the intercoastal. Roof plan, very, very simple roof plan. Um, so it's five and 12 all around, um, barrel tile roof, and uh, very, as, as I said earlier, very symmetrical. As far as the elevations, so this is the, uh, the new house looking east. So as you approach the house, we would have the, uh, this is the garage that has the minimum depth, obviously, to put cars in, and it would have windows, so when you approach the house, it's actually, it looks like it's part of the house. We have a central uh, entrance. We have tall windows on either side, and uh, upstairs, very symmetrical uh, windows with black shutters. The house would be a pearl color, and you have an indentation here where the entrance is, so that we break up the volume on the west side. Uh, this is looking north, so you have the garage with barrel tile roof, stucco finish, pecky cypress doors. This is a link that goes from the garage to the kitchen that has the, uh, the flex room. And then we have the south elevation with, as I mentioned, balconies off the four bedrooms upstairs. We um, are putting, uh, proposing tall windows to allow maximum light in and this is the projecting balcony, the tip of the balcony at the recessed terrace on the east side. Two other elevations, uh, the one facing the water again. Um, I would call the style um, Mediterranean, it's a bit Italianate in style. Black shutters, bronze windows, uh, everything is, is stucco. Uh, a, a black railing that would match the, uh, the shutters 
barrel roof tile. And on this side, you have the bar that I mentioned earlier. And then you have the um, barbecue that is recessed as the same elevation as the terrace, the covered loggia. Um, oh, sorry, I'm missing one elevation. Um, no, actually, I did cover them all. Uh, so then this is a view of the, from the street as you look at the property or drive by. What you would in fact see is that little cottage that would be closest to the street and we think would marry uh, very well into the, into the streetscape. And then you have the drive that is on the south side that sort of meanders to the larger residence that is at the back. Um, I did make a phone call and I spoke to uh, Todd about whether we could, um, if it's possible, to source some dark uh, cobblestones or to, uh, some, uh, to have the drive that is, dark, that is dark as opposed to the typical driveways that we do that are very bright and then would really stand out as a lot of pavements because we have to get from the front to the back of the property. So he suggested a very dark uh, taupey um, color that actually calms everything down and blends very well with the grass and then we would have a band of a lighter material that would accent the drive. So a lot of green on the front. Next uh, slide is as you're approaching the main house you have this is the side of the cottage it would have its own little parking area so something interesting could be done with the parking area especially when there are no cars it looks almost like a little garden and then we have the shed, and we located it uh, in this area to, in fact, mask and hide the, the garage. And then you have a peekaboo view of the house that is much further back. As you approach, you uh, Serpentine Drive, you approach, and the main house is at the back. Looking at it dead center, uh, symmetry, uh, the entrance uh, would be a single door that would be in bron uh, bronze colored. And we would have some cast stone only at the entrance with a copper roof, a little copper roof that would uh, you know, so give it a little bit of punch and indicate that that is the front entrance. The, um, the rest of the house is the bronze windows and the, everything would be stucco and in a, pastel, uh, in a light color. Um, sorry, another angle view as you walk to the front entrance. The intracoastal view, as you can see, the loggia with the columns, always three columns in the corners to anchor the corners, a, um, a balustrade that would be clear, so it's metal, but not very heavy, so that you can actually, when you sit down, you can actually see the water, and the entire top floor would be the master bedroom, bathrooms for his and hers on top, and then you would have the barbecue area here, and we place the swimming pool on the north side going east-west, in order to allow a lot of greenery. So when you're in the living room or you're walking into the house, instead of seeing a swimming pool, what you see is uh, a very extensive lawn. Um, aerial view are from top. This is the main house, the garage, the, the guest house with the little shed, the swimming pool that is assigned to the guest house. And this is a swimming pool that is assigned to the main house and this is a green area. They are planning on putting a dock at some point, and the dock would locate, be located, as you know, one-third into the property, would be on the south side, so it would be uh, over here, but we haven't designed it or uh, applied for it. Uh, and these are the, the details of the, you know, the gates and windows and the front door and columns. And that is my presentation. Thank you. Questions of the applicant? Um, yeah, uh, Daniel, thank you very much. Um, the elevation shows that the finished floor of the main house is pro of the new construction is proposed at nine NAVD. Yeah, and the survey, I believe those marks, those elevation marks are in NAVD as well. And it shows the crown of road to be about 1.2. And spot elevations throughout the site range from that to about 1. So I suppose the 
in order to have the scheme at nine with no stairs going up, is the entire site being filled? I think that's what we'll try to do, or, or try to break it into two pieces, a bit of a slope going up, and then sloping up where the driver is to the nine. And I, we have two steps at the front to get into to the house. So it's a climb, it is. Sure, it's a, a, about your height, about six feet. Yeah. Um, but but uh, remember, it's on an extremely long distance, so. Yeah. Um, the, the drawings show that the yards are flush with the, the resource. so it stands to reason that you're proposing the rear yard to be six or seven feet higher than the neighboring properties. Yes, and we have retaining walls to hold the, the, hold the land. We mm -hmm. have no choice. And then are you, with the relocated uh, cottage, you are also proposing that, I suppose it has to be also at... It has to be at nine. Because base flood is seven or eight here. It's actually nine here. That's what we are told by the, it's by the city. So it's eight with plus one freeboard, or seven with plus two freeboard. Yeah. So you'll have to step up to the cottage. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, just following up. So all of the landscaping is going to be cleared in order to accommodate this earthwork? Yes, actually there are a couple of banyans, like major trees, that are waiting to be transplanted right now. So depending on, obviously, the decision tonight, they're, they're ready to go. So we're going to save as much as we can of the original um, saveable um, uh, trees, but there's a big, big banyan that, want, uh, that we will keep for sure. Have you met Lila Young? No. So this, she was the previous owner of the cottage, and I think she would be devastated if you didn't save the trees, because that was a one of their favorite things about the property. And this has had, been a long saga for this little cottage. Um, so we've seen it a few times. Uh, I wanted to ask you, where is the, because I don't have the benefit of seeing the previous plans that we approved, where is this location of the cottage in relation to where we previously approved? Do you know? Uh, yes, because I, I, I glanced at it. What I tend to do is not get entrenched too much in a previous design because it tends to, to taint. But it was actually on the south side. Okay. And my first reaction, to, if I may, my first reaction was in order to get to the house, you ended up with a very, very long drive. And what surprised me when I looked at the plan as a first reaction is the entire front was paved. And so that's why we thought it would be better just to move the driveway and shorten that distance as much as possible and try to get as much green as possible uh, from the house to the street. Did you, I might have missed it, but did, did you provide us with a streetscape of, of what this uh, will I look like with I the neighbors? Oh, here it is. It might be at the bottom, I think. I see it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's very... Um... So you see, in fact, that's the cottage. And when we have our neighbor here and another neighbor, if we put the house right on the street and the cottage at the back, I think this would be way, way too massive. It would, uh, it would uh, impact this house too much. So it's better to push it back and make it more discreet. And this house now ties into this one that I believe is further back. So we're trying to keep this line equal as much as possible. Okay. I wish there was a little bit of a greater break in the massing. Of, of the new construction. I mean, when you look at it and the other surrounding properties, and again, I don't have the benefit of seeing what we proved for 3130, but I know that that structure is being moved to the road as well. Uh, is that under construction yet? That I don't know. You mean for the neighbor? Um, 3130, yes. I don't know. Okay. I don't, know. I don't even remember. It's been so long what we approved for that site. Um, and the line between the two properties was changing also. There were negotiations for the longest time. So this is where it landed. What we're working on okay. is where it landed. <clears throat> okay, any further questions? 
the applicant. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to actually go there where you just went, but what I don't understand is what what is happening what with uh, the project that we previously approved because I remember that there were a lot of conditions and and decisions that were made uh, to move that uh, existing property, save it, recycle. I don't know, renovate it. Um, I think that there was a waiver approved as an accessory structure to be able to push it further close to the street. Yeah, they originally wanted to sell this house off and like separate it. And so James, I don't know if you were yet on the board. So that was like the ultimate solution we came up with that this became an accessory structure on the property right. rather than trying to carve out a small piece of land and sell it off. And so we gave a, a variance for that. And, and it was not for the front setback, it was for the size of the accessory structure. It exceeded a thousand square feet. Correct. And that was what was granted. We also, I, I remember we discussed about the seawall. Is the seawall being um, redone? Because there were issues that one of the, I think that the, the main issue that kind of convinced us to approve the variance was that uh, in order to salvage this uh, uh, historic house from the uh, sea level rise was to push it forward and to um, redo the seawall, right, to protect So the whatever the conditions that were approved with the previous, uh, the owner, the current owner will abide by that. But I just want to be very, very clear that they want to save the cottage restore it exactly the way it is and simply move it. That's all they want to do, but restore it. It's very much to their advantage to do that um, because it's around 2,000 square feet. It's actually over 2,000 and they would never get an accessory building that side, that size. So it's to their advantage. So anything but the seawall, they will abide by whatever was agreed to give permission to move the, uh, the guest house. I think I'm clear. Did you consider taking your design cues for the new primary structure from the, I guess, new accessory structure since it is moving from primary to accessory structure? Do you mean to, to design in something that is a, an extension of it's the... more related to the original structure on the site. I think there are two, there are two um, ways of looking at uh, doing additions to uh, landmark houses, and I think sometimes what I'm hearing more and more is if you try to do uh, the, the small cottage on steroids at the back and you, you use it too much as an image, uh, the charm of the original one tends to be absorbed by the larger structure. And we did have a discussion about it internally, and we thought it would be better just to do something, first of all, it's not contemporary because that's reaching too far, but something that's very discreet, very uh, very humble in the sense that it's very harmonious and uh, does not compete with the house, the front uh, guest house, and doesn't try to copy it and make it look like it's just copied and inflated. And that was the, the approach that we discussed with the owners, and they they liked the approach. But this is a developer-driven project, correct? I never know. Okay. Well, sorry, I never say because I never know for sure. Okay. Any further questions? Well, just to continue the conversation, I understand what you're saying, and it's important to differentiate between the new and the old, but to me, there's there's just not much of a relation at all between what you're proposing and this structure. You know, you're window patterns are different, shutters versus no shutters. I think there could be a more discreet way to at least feel informed by the existing contributing structure. And then to go back to what Mr. Murphy was speaking about earlier, and I just stepped out for a second, so I wanna make sure I follow that. Um, you're, is it just a site wall around the perimeter of the property and then you're dropping from that site wall retaining wall to the adjacent grade? of your neighboring property? Yes, because we only have, with the setbacks, we only have 10 feet. We're at nine, they're lower, obviously. With the setbacks, we only have so many feet, so we need a retaining wall. Did to, you explore splitting it with like terracing or something to be more considerate to the adjacent neighbors? I mean, I know that it's 
pretty standard in West Palm Beach right now to plop that giant retaining wall, but it's, I mean, it's really doing a disservice to our neighborhoods, and I feel like... I don't think we'd object to that. You mean to, in two steps? On the, the one that's 10 feet, it's very difficult, so maybe two steps, the other one we could do three steps. I yeah, I think anything to, to help minimize it would, I think we really need to start looking at that as a board and, you know, as designers in the city that we're more considerate to our neighbors um, as our city evolves for this higher finish floor elevation that's being mandated. And we're working on uh, numerous properties in West Palm and we all have the same problem is that the houses are so high and the setbacks are small, so what do you do? and then it starts discussions with the neighbors because they end up with them. Um, but I think actually it's a very good suggestion. I don't think the owners would be uh, object to that at all. It actually saves on the, the height of the walls and the cost of the walls. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, I wanted to discuss a little bit the south elevation because you know the house is very symmetrical and I want to know first if the shutters are real shutters or just equipment. always real shutters. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the reason, uh, you know, in the south elevation for everything really, really aligning and symmetrical? And then you have two windows that don't have shutters and are kind of off, you know, the pattern of the first floor where everything is aligned. And the same thing happens on that one. So that is the... Um, That's a good point. Actually, it's funny, it's the first time I noticed that, that we, would, we would put shutters everywhere. Yeah, that is the north elevation, but also happens in the south it elevation. It would be the same, yeah. Yeah, the, the uh, same thing, so... Yes, so we, we would put on all windows two shutters, yes. I'm glad you mentioned the shutters because I'm looking at there's some inconsistency I think from the renderings and the drawings like the one that's showing the historic um, property the I think it's the streetscape so where you see the streetscape there are more of like a rounded shutter and there are shutters on the first floor but then on the drawings and the rendering there's no shutters on the first floor which what what's the intention so on the west elevation, there are no shutters on the ground floor. The was not updated from was the not, yeah. in the middle. So okay. what, we, what we had designed, just so you know, is we had designed a very French looking house because everything I touch ends up looking French for some reason. So, so and we had actually applied to be in front of you. So my client ca called me and said, you've got to stop the French thing because it doesn't match the house. So we made it more Mediterranean and unfrenched it. So that's why the streetscape is not, is, does not match. So I do apologize for that. Okay. Thank you. Will the roof material of both of the structures match or what do you have proposed? For, yes, we'd like to do a barrel tile, a mix but more in the taupey family rather than the orangey red, I think would look better on a house like this. Do you know what was original to the existing structure? What's there is actually quite orange on the original house, a uh, guest house. So it's your intention to change that? I mean, we'd follow any suggestion, but I th the orange is a bit brutal. For, for some I think the taupey would just make everything more discreet, personal preference. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
Frederique Metner presenting case 22-101 for new construction at 3120 Washington Road. The reason we're presenting it as just new construction is because the relocation was previously approved. So was a new construction. However, it is a new owner and the applicant wishes to change the design of what was approved by the board. Um, and the reason it's a continued case is because the uh, design kept changing. Um, and the applicant requested to be continued. So this was the final um, presentation they wanted to move forward with. And as the board chair stated, this is um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jim and Lila Young's house um, that they lived in for many years and cared for the property very much. And they were here uh, at a previous hearing when it was approved to be relocated towards the front of the property. Um, it is on that stretch of Washington Road where you have indeed seen many modifications and changes to the houses, including the one just to the south, which has also been approved to re be relocated further west to Washington Road and a new structure built behind it. So this is the current site. Uh, a lot of the uh, foliage has been removed. This is the home in the back. And then this is the rendering that was provided of the front of the house. So again, the survey with the two structures currently on site and being relocated to the front in the, with the same setbacks as previously approved, however mirrored, um, as the applicant stated, more to the north side than on the south side of the property. Um, still a two-story two single-family home here with a four-car garage. That was also what was presented previously. Uh, David Lawrence was the prior architect who presented and received approval from the board. Um, and this is just a, a revised application for this new construction. The floor plans uh, and the elevations that have been presented to you, it is a completely side-loading garage now. Previously, it was partially front and side-loading. And so this was actually the previous approval. As you can see, it was on the south side here. It had, excuse me, a three-car garage um, with two um, from the front, even though it would have also been blocked visually. Um, and then this was the previous design that was approved by the board in March of 2022. So very similar massing, similar genre, um, just a new owner and some, some modifications. Um, the rendering that was supplied uh, was with the relocated buildings here, the driveway now to the south and the new construction behind. Again, that rendered aerial with the two relocated historic structures. We did appreciate that the garage was one story and then that's two story element focused back here. And then these are the street uh, elevations that feature their original cimital with those arched windows and arched shutters. This property um, has already been approved for again being relocated to the front with the new house in the back. There's also additions proposed and approved for behind 3140 and modifications for 3180. So this streetscape, I would say, is actually not as representative as they normally are. So we've reviewed this, especially in light of what was previously approved. I believe it means the uh, additional compatibility criteria, standard 9 and 10, and so we are recommending approval. Happy to take questions. Questions? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Frederick. So just, I'm sorry, one more time. So this is listed as a continued item because we had seen it before and given design direction for modifications and now they're back? No, I apologize if I've confused the situation. Uh, because the applicant submitted with a whole set of plans. It was even in your packet. And prior to the hearing, I think it was even the day of, they requested to be continued because they were internally making design changes. And then it happened again and again. And so we're finally here. But that the continuation is just with this owner, this co new construction, when there's a full set of previous approvals for previous owner. This is the first time we're seeing this scheme. This building yes okay. so the relocation was approved but the actual new, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and then yet they talk about modifications to the previous design and I think that's just again internal from the first time they submitted but you never heard it you may have seen it in your packet 
it's been on some agendas, but you never had a full presentation on it. But the waiver or the variance, I think it's a waiver, that's vetted with the pre previous appro approval and doesn't correct. have to be acted upon again. That's correct. That okay. was for the Class B, yes. Um, and does the city have any specimen tree ordinance or protection for a caliper or DBH? We do have a, a historic or specimen tree designation if the owner wishes to cho uh, chooses to do so. Okay. And has there been discussions with the planning director and, and electeds or just internally within your department about the real consequence of having higher elevations and freeboard in the, especially for waterfront properties in the age of uh, resiliency and sea level rise, that ordinance really does need to be examined for side and rear and front yards and limiting the amount of earth and fill for runoff and visual impact? Uh, concerns have been expressed, but I believe there are no plans at this time to modify the code or adopt design guidelines accordingly. And final question, does your plans require mechanical equipment to be shown or is that something that can be handled at the staff that at level? The we deal with that at the permitting okay. level. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I have a question about the application. I mean, I know that it's under just for new construction, but technically this is a whole new location for the historic it's structure. It's on the north side. So You're right, I probably should, that, that is my error. I probably should have included the relocation to the north side um, with, with it being mirrored. Uh, that will, that's so I feel like technically our previous approvals don't hold any weight on this new application because it's not even the same location that we previously approved. Um, I, I can appreciate that. Certainly the old approvals still stand, but by the owner electing to modify the design, then yes. Um, and I will, I will own that. That was my, my mistake of focusing just on the new construction. I just remember we agonized over this for so long. And now it's like, and I think that was the second time that it came back to us. I mean, I can't even. It was multiple times. And so. This has been like front, years at this point. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Um, the front setback, the relative side setbacks are still the same. It is just focused more to the north side. And so that is my mistake for not um, really presenting. I, I mean, the site plan is here um, and not realizing there would be concerns with that. So, but since the house is also mirrored from the previous approval, it seemed to make sense to yeah. go with that. And that really, the design of the house is what has changed. But um, that is my mistake for not guiding that properly. Frederick, do you think that there are some elevation challenges that have not been accurately depicted um, with the quite severe grade change from the road to the finished floor of the relocated house um, having to rise, I th think it's six and a half feet or more to nine um, and just ramping and to um, Kristen's point, um, terracing, I, I'm not that concerned with the elevation of the principal structure because of the long driveway. It'll gradually get to that height. But I think there's not been truth in the rent. Um, I think the renderings are misleading in terms of the elevation and exactly how you would experience that from the street. The front buildings. Um, I, I can see that. I mean, the, the new construction now the relocated houses, just the new construction is back 113 feet. So I agree, the new, and then you've got the length or depth of the four car garage before you get to the new house. So um, the uh, plans for the accessory uh, or the relocated accessory are actually what was submitted were the exact ones from an, um, 
elevation standpoint that were previously approved. I will just pull those up real quick. Um, so these were what was presented, um, but you're right, it does not really show a lot of steps and how the grade would work for that. So this is actually um, what was previously submitted as well in terms of any elevation modifications. Is the relocated cottage landmarked? It is, yes. So theoretically, that could get a floodplain variance, it, or that doesn't have to be lifted to the... Um, I think because it's relocated, it probably will need to meet it, it would but it would be up to the Construction Board of Adjustment and Appeals to make that final decision. I understand. Thank you. How do you think this application compares to the previous approval? I think it's actually quite similar, I think. Um, uh, let me get to you again, comparing the two. Um, and I believe when the, the board heard this last time, <clears throat> uh, it was actually quite a quick approval process for this new construction. Because yes, you had heard it several times, but with this iteration, um, it was a very short meeting, very short discussion, and it was approved. So comparing this that was previously approved to um, this, I thought was, given how far set back it is, I did not think it was a dramatic change. Do you, I don't know if you have it handy, but I, I'm, I don't know, I'm most concerned with the streetscape and it's bothering me that I feel like this streetscape is not really accurate, like reflective of what it's actually gonna look like. Um, do you have the streetscape for the previous approval? I do not, not with me this evening. <clears throat> Cause I think that's, I remember talking about like how it's going to look, have, having this massive structure behind it and, and I, I'm not sure if this is better or worse, you know, to have it offset rather than directly behind. I see what you're saying. I do think it impacts the streetscape pretty significantly. I don't know, for some reason this like reads to me that that's what happened. You know, it was like moved directly forward from its original location to allow for this other structure to be built. Because I think it's pretty well centered on the lot right now, is it? It's towards the south. So it's towards the south. So this is more aligned with the original location than what's being currently proposed? Here. Um, <clears throat> at least this building is further to the south. I guess the main one is centered. Yeah, I do think the positioning of it and what was previously approved is exactly what you're saying. It reads as the historic house that was just moved forward on the lot. And then the new structure is positioned to honor that. And I think now it's been located in a position that's more advantageous to the new structure. So it's kind of like pushing the historic contributing structure just where it's most convenient versus like a place of honor um, that helps tell the story of the neighborhood. I mean, at least to me, that's more important, is like what happens with that contributing structure. Obviously, we've got a whole separate issue with the fill, and I wonder if the neighbors have any idea. <clears throat> but are both those sites under construction? They, yes, they do. Yeah, the board approved a new construction on the lot to the north, the contemporary yeah. home that flanks the park. And um, 
the owner to the south is the one who previously owned this lot. And are they still going forward with that project? I don't I haven't seen any permits, but yes, I believe they are. <clears throat> it's been like so many plans for all of these. It's been like there has been a lot. Musical chairs. Yeah, musical houses definitely. Um I don't even know for the north site how are they handling the the elevation requirements? It's probably just the site wall. Yeah. Yep. And if that's the case, then they don't need to tear us down on that side. The new applicant doesn't need to tear us down on that side. But and I think they're going to face the same on the south with the new construction of the mm -hmm. large home that was approved behind this one being relocated. Are we putting these historic structures in jeopardy by approving this kind of treatment to the site? Um, I don't think so. I, I mean, I understand, and again, I will take full ownership of the relocation of them being mirrored, but for them moving forward, I continue, I maintain that that's actually the ideal situation in terms of the scale, in terms of the flooding and water intrusion that's already happening. Um, I think this is the best situation for these houses. And you said it's already up in the air right now. It is not. The, oh, the applicant not. stated that, but when we drove by yes, a couple days ago, it did not appear that way to me. Uh, this is um, this is a photograph I took. I, I didn't observe it. I don't see it in this photo. I do not believe it is elevated. Okay. Any further questions? Just one. Um, would um, action by this commission require separate motions for the relocation? Uh, again, um, I was coming into this more as the new design, but because it is a new s site, yes, or perhaps if the case is continued, then we can package it a little better for the board. Yeah, uh, my opinion is that, I mean, we can go, we can discuss this in executive, but my opinion is that we need to review the relocation if it doesn't exactly match the previously approved one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you have any members of the public that would like to speak on this case? Okay, seeing none, we'll go into executive session. Um, I would like to see um, more details of the front relocated structure, including color photographs of the structure. Um, I'd also like to see uh, a root line or a drip line of the center banyan tree on the site plan um, for consideration. As it pertains to the new construction in the back, I appreciate um, the presentation that Ms. Mintner did showing us the previously approved plans. I don't think the architecture that was previously proposed was is that far off from what is being proposed today. Um, so I kind of um, default to that prior approval architecturally. Um, not necessarily agree or disagree with it, but I'm kind of letting that go. Um, will default to the architects for more comments on that. Um, but in just in terms of my understanding of these elevated structures on the waterfront, I think we need a bit more information on how that relocated structure is going to meet the earth. Okay. Yeah, and I would add to that that it would be a good idea to have a full site plan develop with all the correct uh, floor, finish floor elevations at each step. Yep. Any thoughts on the proposed new location as opposed to the previously approved? I, I think that we should review it. I think that we need to go back to that uh, approved application and see what the differences are. Yeah. Uh, how it impacts the relocated cottage. 
I, I think we spent, qu I think, quite a bit of time on its location. I think that we review it probably twice before we approve the variance to name it an, as mm -hmm. an accessory structure. The, the existing cottage is not changing in orientation. It's just moving in axes further to the street. So the front is the front and the rear is the rear. Um, and in that sense, it holds true to its placement on a lot meaning close to the side property line. I, I totally agree, though, um, in terms of I'd like to see the, um, the prior location. I think, I think that is rotated. I believe that is rotated. Do you? I, look, I judge by the elevations, the front door is... You mean the current one or the previously approved one? Because both. Is the previous cottage previous. proposed to be rotated or just moved forward? I believe it is just moving forward. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, but that's how I read it. Well, we don't have that information. Uh, the accessory structure to the cottage is in front and now is Yeah. Back. Yes, it's just, but orientation-wise is all I was saying. I see. Yeah. I mean, looking at the site plan, it doesn't seem like it would significantly impact the way that the proposed structure is positioned to push that contributing structure more centered on the site. You're losing that guest parking, which I think makes it feel too much like two separate developments anyways. So, I mean, I would like to see it come back more centered like we had previously approved. And I think that also helps the massing element that you brought up, how you read that from the street, because then it's, you know, squishing together. Not that's not a good way to put it, but it's um, compressing the larger view of kind of this assemblage of <coughs> structures. And if it were to be more aligned, do you have any concerns about the roof height on the garage? What, what is nice about this version and what they achieve by doing that is that the new four-car garage is actually tucked behind and is not visible from the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but does it need to, I mean, could it be a flat roof? Like, does it need to have a matching roof line, like a hip roof? Just throwing that out there. Just because that's closer to the historic structure. Is there an elevation view that shows the view from, let's see, what is that, the south? I mean, uh, I see uh, the separate structures. Correct, and that is true also that we are not seeing here the elevation, yeah. the relationship in yeah. between the existing and the new. Right, yeah. I think we really proposed. need that yeah. to make a decision. Yep. It because it, the rendering it seems to imply that the garage is completely obscured by the relocated structure, right? But I don't know that that is true. Yeah, I mean, I think even if you don't center the contributing structure, but at least put that, let's see, the north edge of it in alignment with the structure, so you're still blocking it, like what you're saying, but we're getting a little closer to center. I think there's a middle ground there that helps accomplish all these things that we're discussing. Um, and Ms. Mittner, I actually have a question. So two pools are, it's a permissible via code? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is the shed contributing? Yes, they both okay. are. So you can task the applicant to photo document now existing photographs of the structure for the I'm I'm thinking we're heading towards a deferral or a continuance um, for the updated package next month 
Y yes, and we also have historic photographs of the. Right. I would Correct. like to in see the, those included again. Correct. In the in the approval, mm -hmm. there were historic photographs yep. where the architect was um, going back, right? So he was going to renovate the existing building. Right, and those Correct. elevations are the same from what was previously approved, but they're not um, presented all together. I understand what you're looking for. Okay, any further discussion or would someone like to make a motion to continue? Um, I'll make a motion to continue, but I do want to say that I think that the updates to the primary structure and improvement. Yes. From where we were, you know, I think it's much more refined and the detailing scaled well and, you know, things like that. So I just want to make note of it while we're foc focusing on these other things. So I will make a motion to defer case number 22-101 for 3120 Washington Road to next month's Historic Preservation Board meeting. Who's the second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Our next case is 845 Ardmore Road, case 22-107. Good evening, board. Thank you for your time. My name is Daniel Sharif with um, Randall Self Architects. I'll be presenting the continued case for 845 Ardmore Road. Um, just to recap, um, the style that we were presenting previously was a British colonial with Dutch colonial influences. Um, we're sticking with that style, of course, and what drew us to the style was the architectural elements that you know, those two styles have, like the sculptural parapeted gable walls, these curvilinear wing walls, um, the stepping and the massing that we really liked that helped reduce the, the, the feel of the massing along the street in, in relation to the um, other properties. You know, we use smooth white stucco for the finish of, of the walls, um, white, uh, flat white concrete roof tiles, bronze windows for contrast, um, simple detailing, and we've added these uh, stone coral accents as well. Um, and we also had these uh, warm and muted like wood tones for our front door, our garage. Um, so in relation to our previous um, presentation, uh, the revised being on the left and um, the previous being um, on the right, you know, some of the comments we had received last time were primarily in regard to scale and proportion. Um, the board had said that, you know, the first story massing um, of our entryway, um, that area seemed to be too high in relation to the street. So as you can see, we lowered that about a foot and you can see it here more so in, in the street elevation, the revised being on top and the uh, previous presentation being on the bottom. Um, so we feel like that helps with reducing the scale of that, that one story element in the front where we have our entry door, um, as well as they made, you guys made comments about um, our proportions of our windows, which we, we tried to get those more in line to have a more rect rect rectangular uh, proportion to them. Um, and also the mutton pattern that we used, um, there, were, there was a comment about inconsistency in, in the mutton pattern. So we've kind of made them all the same for more consistency. Um, another comment we had received was that you wanted us to remove uh, some of the columns that we had, these faux kind of columns that were more reminiscent of Mediterranean revival. So we've eliminated that in that front entry, as you could see, and we did more of a recessed entry uh, detail there. Um, we had also gotten a comment in regard to the light fixture above. Um, the comment was to remove the light fixture, but we felt like we should keep it. I mean, it, it seems like architecturally there should be some type of element above that archway. Um, but we've just changed it to a more traditional looking light feature. 
Um, of course, the railing and the front was removed. Um, in the previous iteration, it was a little bit out of scale. So when we drop the scale of that front one-story massing, the railing, of course, doesn't work anymore. We removed that. And instead, we've added this um, coral stone header above these windows to add a little bit more architectural detailing there to kind of balance out the front elevation, as well as adding um, this faux wood surround um, and column details around the second story windows where they step back. Um, and here's the street elevation again, where you can kind of see addressing that, that massing issue as I spoke about before of trying to reduce that massing. And you can start to see that the proportions of these windows, the front door, the garage door, we reduce these so they're more in line with the existing uh, elevations on the street. And here you can see the rendering of both projects uh, from the revised on the uh, left and the uh, previous version on, on the right. And we also have drawings of the site plan for reference. If you guys would like to review those, we didn't really get any comments in regard to the site plan, floor plans, your roof plans, and um, the remaining elevations. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the thorough presentation. It's very helpful to have a side-by-side -side comparison um, and for you to address our comments one by one, so thank you. No problem. So questions of the applicant? I'd like to echo what you said. It was very easy to follow, and I appreciate you noting everyone's comments and addressing them directly. Um, really, the only thing that I have a question about is if you explored, instead of doing this kind of like three over one light pattern or two over one light pattern, if you looked at doing kind of a standard casement type window like you have on the second floor windows on the right, if you looked at doing all of the windows with a traditional light pattern. Um, no, we did not explore that, so, okay. I mean, we could, I mean, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I think the way that the casement windows on the second floor are proportioned on the previously mm. proposed is really nice, and I think that that ties in more to the adjacent structures and the light pattern, um, but I, that's, I think really my only comment that's standing out to me right now, I appreciate the scaling changes you made and I do think that relates much better to the adjacent structures. Um, following up on that, um, yeah, I agree with Chris 100%. I think the windows were more successful in the first iteration, sorry about that. Um, if that was from me, I don't think it was. Um, I also think the garage doors proportion in the original was more successful, but the um, entry is, and the whole front massing of the um, um, front portion is vastly um, improved. I agree with all those comments. Any further questions of the applicant? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Frederick Bentner presenting a case 22-107 for new construction at 845 Ardmore Road. Um, as you just heard, it was, of course, a continued case and uh, came to you initially actually as a variance, a lot split, and a conceptual new construction. And so um, the, they finalized their plans last time um, and presented to you uh, this 3,190 square foot British colonial style home that would be on the eastern portion of this lot. This is the adjoining uh, property. Um, the site plan, uh, the floor plans that were just presented to you, and then most significantly, the modifications um, based on the direction by the board. Um, so this is also a kind of side-by-side -side comparison of what you previously saw, the comments that the board um, gave to the applicant and the modifications, kind of the simplification here of the windows, the lowering of the head height and the 
window uh, the door style um, narrowing these windows up here and just and eliminating this element here so just simplifying the style and bringing the scale down of this uh, front piece um, at the last board meeting you had asked what the board previously saw this was back in March um, and these were the conceptual plans that the board kind of gave the green light to and what was the previous proposal was based on and again now we're refined so um, the revised drawings uh, relative to the adjoining properties in the Flamingo Park Historic District and reviewing the compatibility criteria and standard 9 and 10 we are recommending approval questions of staff Frederick, do you know of any other um, homes in Flamingo Park that are of this style? Uh, I do not. Okay. Do you have an opinion on the windows? I think the proportions are better. Um, especially this, uh, these triple windows here. Um, what about the light pattern? Really, to me, that reads more craftsman prairie than British colonial, but um, I believe the applicant was trying to take the direction that they heard at the last meeting, so trying to balance what was stated versus what was proposed. Mm -hmm. so. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Do we have any members of the public that wish to speak on this case? Okay, seeing none, we'll go into executive session. So I heard maybe there are two conditions of approval. The light pattern in the garage. <clears throat> um, I, I don't know, I, does anyone else think the garage door is a little short now or is it just my eyes going back and forth it's the one doorway that could be higher yeah <laughs> and it's it's the smallest is, is all I'm getting at and maybe it's compounded by the entry arch it just seems a little stout but um, I prefer the proposed um, the original windows, but I default to uh, the architects and, of course, Ms. Mintner, who believes that the current is um, is a better proportion and more appropriate. Well, I think she was saying the proportion is right, but the light pattern is not right. The proportion of the openings is correct. The light pattern we would want to see change. Yes. Got it. But I'll, I'll agree with you on the garage door. I mean, it feels more like an accessory structure garage door height rather than a new construction. I could go either way. And how would we do the language for the light pattern? I feel like a traditional, just saying a traditional light pattern doesn't describe it. Well, do you like what the previous version had, or would you like yeah. to see? Well, see the previous all version on the first divided, floor right? has like a four over has a four over one. Yeah, but I would want to see all of them evenly proportioned light. I mean, I could call it that evenly proportioned light pattern. So maybe so, mirror. So what you mean a, a six over six or something like that? It depends on the proportion. But it looks like some of the windows are casement windows and some are fixed. But I think if we describe it as an evenly proportioned light pattern. Is that descriptive enough, Ms. Mittner? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it looks like in the three <laughs> windows on the first, on the ground floor, yeah, the, the proportions are totally off on the, on the grid because it, they make it look too high because the, the grid is not mm -hmm. proportionally correct. Do you have any concerns about the style? It's a good point. I know. I the that's, style is taking over. That's my whole I love this house. It's it's really cute. I do agree with yeah. the light pattern on the windows, but this style doesn't exist in Flamingo Park. 
If we allow this house, we're going to be adding a new style to Flamingo Park that other potential builders and homeowners would be able to copy. Um, I think there's one Dutch, Dutch colonial over on P Street in Grandview Heights, um, but this is not a Dutch colonial. I just if this be, if this became more Mediterranean and the the three windows on the front were arched and that hip roof peak was changed to be more Mediterranean, maybe a little Juliet balcony, I think this would be adorable and fit right into Flamingo Park. But this to me stands out and I think it sets a precedence that we don't want. It is something that we've brought up on other cases mm -hmm. that the style is not present in the rest of the neighborhood and I feel like we've mandated a change because of it. I think what's problematic is that we didn't identify it until now. I know. And I'm not sure what to do about that. I don't feel like it's fair to the applicant that we didn't address that earlier. So if we want to see that change, I would want to be able to handle it at a staff level so that we're not deferring them another month since they would have to do additional design changes even though the you know the plan and the massing really wouldn't be changing it's just the detailing like yeah i mentioned i know i think it could very easily as you just illustrated with your recommendations you know be changed to another style it's not like it has a buttery or anything yeah so todd could you go back through did you say a hip roof the gable to a hip yes and then um, gable to hip, and um, I believe the three windows on the bottom should be arched. <coughs> and then that would change, make it more Mediterranean. And would you want to see a barrel tile roof? Actually, I would. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, do we need to ask? How if does the, the architect feel? Okay? Yeah. Does anybody else on the board want to weigh in? Any concerns about yeah. making these changes? <coughs> I think that we can make those changes. So then I don't think that the light fixture above the entrance is appropriate either if we are going that direction. I would prefer to have some other type of decoration or three dots or and the, and the Maybe a, a crest. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be careful about those crests. I know. <laughs> can, can we pull up the sketch that they were given a green light for the lot split? It's a little ambiguous style-wise. I think you could read that as more Mediterranean. Ms. Mintner, I'm interested to hear your reaction to this discussion that's... Uh, I, I appreciate all the comments. I think they're very fair um, in terms of Mediterranean Mission Revival being more appropriate for Flamingo Park. But my concern, again, that it, this is the third time in front of you and it hasn't been brought up before. So, um, and I, I believe the applicant didn't want a Mediterranean revival. Um, I think even though it's not one, I don't think it's, I don't think it's in your face British colonial, even though I, I agree that's what I would classify it as, I, I think. Um, it's more subdued, especially at the um, first floor level with the arched entry, I think. Um, some of these elements can be found um, in the neighborhood, except for the, the parapet, uh, or the, the wall, the end walls. Gables, thank the end you. gable. Yes, thank you. Do you think that it would lend itself more to blending in with its surroundings if it went the direction of more of like a pecky cypress wood like in that concept 
sketch the door without, of the garage door yeah with the garage door it was a treatment on those second floor windows almost like it was a previously an open porch that was enclosed if you go to that sketch right that's how i read it yeah because that warms it up it feels less contemporary yeah i think that detail and then the detail on the bottom make it those are more mediterranean elements in the historic districts And then that, I mean, that does match the stone. I mean, the stone is something more that. How does everyone feel about that? Instead of the stone making it wood. No, I mean that stone. I think over the doors, the garage door, and those those um, the ribbon of windows could so just stay. Three. But I think ha having that warmth on the second, first and second floors between the front door, the garage door, and then around those windows on the second floor, like almost like if that was treated a little bit differently. Yeah, I mean, I think you could do that, or you could change the stone to a lintel detail like you see on the sea streets on Palm Beach. That's a good point. And then you would have the lintel, the express lintel that ties into the three grooved window above. So you would do that on the second floor, you're saying? N the no, you would do it on the first floor and the second floor. So you would have I do the lintel, lintel detail where the stone is uh -huh. on the first floor above the garage and those three windows, and then what looks like the light gray detail with the three windows. That's kind of an expression of what was previously open is now enclosed. Make that element the wood as well. And how would you treat the front door? Just leave that however they Whatever decide they to want. interpret it. Okay. Because yeah. I could see that pecky or painted or I think it'd from be a nice price pecky. standpoint, it's not going to be pecky. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I like uh, the door as it is in this last iteration. Um, I just am so hung up on this style because I know this neighborhood so well. And I think it would affect this neighborhood dramatically if this was not uh, Mediterranean. Can we ask the applicant about the style? Yes, would you like to weigh in on our conversation? <laughs> Yeah, so we did discuss with the client that, you know, this may be a comment that we received because we are aware that the Flamingo Park District has a lot more Mediterranean, Mediterranean Revival and, you know, missionary style homes. I mean, we think if we just change the barrel tile um, and maybe change some color scheme with the garage, may, maybe you'll, you'll get closer to that Mediterranean Revival feel that you would want. And we did discuss with the owner as well that you know we can't really do much about the fact that if we change the style because you guys want a different style they, they're aware of it so what about the peak that you have what if that was a little bit more mediterranean than this this uh hip more gable mm -hmm. oh what do you think more of a Gable with purlins and everything else on it. Yes. Um, I'd, 
like to just try and do it with the barrel tiles first. I sort of like the massing and everything because it is set back. That lower element is in line with everything with the streetscape, okay. with the other houses. So that one, say, parapet that's in there, that's set back. So once the landscaping and everything else is in there, you're not gonna pick that up as much. And if you want more of a Mediterranean, then throw in the barrel tiles and go in with a darker wood grain on the doors um, would bring that out. I don't disagree with you on the arch windows, but uh, the arch, uh, I don't know if it ties in with the rest of the house because then we have the one arch element in the entry feature, right. and then you're adding those three, and then it throws it off on that wall okay. because it's not offset. There's no relief. So I think that's going to just um, pretty much when you see it, you're going to say uh, on one plane it doesn't work. Okay. And when it's offset and you get relief, you can bring those different elements on a plane. But I wouldn't do it on this particular uh, facade. But I think you know switching it to a barrel tile and bringing the darker wood grains into it would bring that feel of the Mediterranean style back into it. Okay. Well, thank you for being flexible. We thank appreciate you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Any further questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So is everyone comfortable with that compromise? Yes. I think it's fair. Okay. Great. Would you like to make a motion? I move that the Historic Preservation Board approve application number 22-107845 Ardmore Road for new construction in accordance with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, specifically standards 9 and 10, as well as the addi additional criteria set forth in the City's Historic Preservation Ordinance, Section 94-49 of the City Zone and Land Development Regulations. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report which constitute competent substantial evidence. In addition, the approval of this request is made conditional upon the following restrictions, stipulations, and or safeguards I move are necessary to ensure compliance with the purpose and intent of the Historic Preservation Ordinance and the Historic Preservation Element of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of West Palm Beach. The conditions include the following. One, change the light pattern to be evenly proportioned. Two, raise the garage door to the height that was previously proposed. Three, utilize a barrel tile roof. And four, incorporate wood tones in the detailing. To the second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. And, and please specify barrel tile rather than S tile. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> have your pictures. You have your. Do we have a list? Yeah. These yeah. are all the. Photos. Not all. We've got two. We got two photos here. And then you've got your plans here. They're all they're separate. Yeah. Floor plan, elevations, roof plan, site plan. They're all the separate. Some of the other photographs are not in this. I don't, file. I don't, I don't okay. have them here. That's fine. Yeah, you just have the two main ones. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Rick Davis from Shoreline Designs, and I'm helping Mr. and Mrs. Soderman to design an addition to expand their existing house at 230 Lighten Court. Hopefully everybody can appreciate a much smaller project than the ones you've previously reviewed. However, not less important, just maybe smaller in size. Um, there's concerns that um, we're trying to meet the needs of a, a family that has a special needs son. So we need to expand space for physical therapy while keeping the architecture uh, style matching the existing 1925 uh, mission style home. 
and they do own a double lot at 230 Lighten Court. So I know those are in uh, Central Park with a smaller, smaller property. Uh, 50 by 50 is the typical lot. Um, so it's a little bit of a challenge to keep in compliance with lot coverage and um, floor area ratio and so on on these smaller lots. Um, at the risk of being redundant, I'm going to use some of the same photos that I have sent to Frederick. And what you see is the existing home. And I better consult with my IT department here. The other yeah, photographs. Are they, or the other, is the other photo of the vacant? Yeah, I think it's right down here. Site of addition, there we go. That's, yeah, yeah it's, okay. excuse me. Okay, this is concealed with landscape, but the, this is the vacant half of the, the double lot. And whoops, I just closed it down. <laughs> I'm trying to go back to the, uh, the site plan and the yep. proposed plans. There we go. And then to get back to the list of other files. Uh, you can minimize it and go back. There we go. Okay. Thank you. If you see the shaded, the hatched area on the left is the existing. Uh, I'll scroll over a little bit. The um, the vacant half of the lot is on the right side. And to minimize any disturbance inside the house, this is a detached addition. So the living conditions, again, a concern with, with their son to keep minimal disturbance. Um, to comply with the lot coverage, a portion of this is just an open trellis. And we're proposing a a pool and patio, a walkway to a storage area that will have a charging station for an electric wheelchair, an open room that will be uh, open to the pool patio and as well as the trellis to be used for the uh, indoor exercise area with its own bathroom. Uh, the pool and patio, again for physical therapy and so on. We are increasing the width of the driveway to achieve two off-street parking. And I'll flip to the exterior photographs, possibly. Nope. Where were the other? You want elevations? <laughs> Sorry. You want elevations? There we go. Okay, there's our list. You want elevations? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Again, it's the mission style, so we have the the uh, barrel tile, um, divided light pattern, white frame, aluminum windows. The upper area is is. It's functional as storage area, but it's an aesthetic feature to uh, continue that, that Spanish mission style architecture. This would be the, the north facing to Lighten Court. And um, again, it's detached, so there's the existing building is not shown in this, but from the photograph we had before, you saw the uh, barrel tile, Spanish style. And it is in compliance with all the um, the front square footage of green space requirement, the lot coverage, floor area ratios, and um, height, height requirements and so on. I believe That's uh, all I have for the presentation. There'll be more photographs of the neighboring homes to show. There's a good variety on this street, and um, those will be in the presentation that Frederick uh, that I had sent her.
Is there any questions? Questions of the applicant? On the existing home, are all of the light patterns one over one? There is plain glass, white frame windows on the existing home. Did you look at continuing that for the accessory structure? We could, I felt this was more in keeping with the mission style, but I think those were replaced at some point. Um, but if that's a condition for approval, we could certainly do that. Um, can you can you talk about the need for the attic or the second floor? Just a family request for storage space, and we utilize that as a architectural feature. I'm sorry, should I? It, simply a storage space request for family needs. Um, in in doing so, since we didn't increase the footprint of the building, we use it as an architectural element. The building sits back to the uh, rear of the property. It's a, it's fairly shallow property, but it's wide, so there'll be a landscape and pool patio in front of it. Have you thought about um, matching the roof line with the parapet on the existing uh, main house with this uh, new addition or accessory structure? including getting rid of the um, gable roof that you have as your architectural element? Because that roof line doesn't exist on the main structure, so I'm just wondering if you thought about that. Early in the, in the real early conce conceptual stages, we looked at parapets and flat roofs, and it didn't have as much character, in my opinion, but. Um, we thought the use of the barrel tile as an accent, since the existing home has barrel tile features, we thought that added more to it. Also, there's a cathedral ceiling in the main exercise area. I see. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I totally agree with Todd's comment. Uh, um, uh, do you think that at least a tower you can explore to have like a parapet uh, on the roof instead of a heap roof? Is that just on the tower feature or in the, the main? Well, I, I, I think that the main is going to be kind of behind the, the main residence, but the tower may be visible from the street. So um, I am a little concerned that it's going to be overpowering the, the main house. When I mean, just food the, for thought. The, we felt the flat parapet kind of lacked any excitement or architectural I, I understand, features, but, so. but the, the, I think, and, and I don't know if Christy can comment on this, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but um, I mean, if it's just a storage, an attic space, I don't know that merits the importance. From that point of view, maybe the aesthetic uh, contribution of this feature is more important than the storage aspect of it. But we thought it added well, added character I, to it. I, I understand. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Have you done any studies and other ways that you could accommodate the, the storage needs rather than creating an attic space? Well, as I had mentioned, it's, it's tight with the lot coverage on these smaller lots. And uh, that's, again, why the trellis is an open roof structure rather than a covered porch. So we're, we're close to the limit. Um, we wouldn't be able to take that square footage and put it downstairs and increase the footprint. Any further questions of the applicant? 
How do you access the storage space? Right now it's just an attic access. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Frederick Mittner presenting case 22-119. It's an ad valorem pre-construction application for new construction of the accessory structure at 230 Lytton Court. As you can see, Lytton Court is a very unique street. It actually has its own um, contact, uh, not its entirely own context, but in the code, there are special provisions for it because as you can see, they're extremely small lots. The majority of them are 50 by 50. A few of them are longer, um, but it, it definitely has its own context and characteristics. So the primary structure currently uh, exists on the eastern part of the lot. It's a contributing um, Mission Revival style home built in the 20s and the request is to build a small detached accessory structure of approximately 460 square feet with a storage tower of approximately 175 square feet in the Mission Revival style. So this is kind of the piece together um, image of the house. There are some barrel tile or actually S tile accents in the front here um, and then this <clears throat> large side lot is where the um, accessory structure would be focused between the landscaping and probably wouldn't be visible. Uh, and again, it's also set back uh, significantly, approximately um, 35 feet from the front of the street. So uh, it does meet all accessory structure setbacks and requirements. Um, and as indicated, a pool and the purpose of this accessory is um, for their son to have physical therapy opportunities here. Uh, so this is kind of zoomed in. And then the elevations you saw previously. So this would be set back from the road, but this is what you would see from the front. And uh, the rear, which again, it's a very shallow lot in that sense, um, abutting neighbors there, and then small side elevations. Uh, and again, it's just 460 square feet. So I'd like to just re reiterate, it is a very small structure. Um, we do believe it meets the compatibility criteria. Um, it is differentiated from the, the primary structure, yet compatible. And so we do believe it meets standards 9 and 10. Thank you. Questions of staff? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, my experience with um, areas on above the main level that are referred to as attic are typically areas that have um, restrictions that differ from an obvious second floor. This has the ceiling height, in my experience, and two elevations with fenestration that would yield itself to be a second floor. Um, are there some kind of workarounds or benefits by identifying this as an attic? So given the access being just a pull-down ladder, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, therefore we do believe um, it does meet that criteria. Uh, again, it's just 175 square feet. Right. Um, and it's, um, I don't have the finished floor on this one, but it's, you know, less than I think it's seven eight. feet. It's, it's not extremely tall. Um, the beam height below here is 9-1, and the tower beam height 16-10. Um, I don't have all the dimensions in here, but it, it is not a very high second story. Right, but a two-story accessory structure is permitted? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. We c would consider this an attic space. But they have, they have the, um, and the height enough is square footage to do a full second floor on that structure. They would be allowed. Not a not a full second floor. No, 
um, but this, these numbers work here. Uh, Frederick, is there is there another governing regulation for the footprint of the accessory structure? There is an uh, accessory other structure. There is because so. it seems as though they have room for a hundred square feet more in terms of overall lot coverage. Oh, and then I'm once again I'm misunderstanding the question. Could um, they could they put more square footage? On the ground floor? Yes. I'd have to run the numbers. Okay. I don't know. I know they were concerned about the space for the pool and having adequate walkways around it and the driveway, so I don't know if that's what <clears throat> limited them to this, but um, I, I don't know how much more they have. It would certainly be more successful if it was on the first floor. I mean, the other thing that I was thinking about is if you changed it to a parapet mm -hmm. and then you, I can't tell what the ceiling height is, I'd have to zoom in, but if you kept the ceiling height conservative and had a parapet roof, if you could get storage between the, the roof line, the structure of your roof line and the ceiling because that parapet could be pushed up and then you'd have storage across you know, more of the structure, or maybe just part of the structure, and it's hidden by the parapet. Thank you. Yeah, when I asked a question to the applicant about changing the roof of the tower, I was kind of trying to achieve uh, a lower parapet, right? Because he can, or he could, terminate the parapet at the bottom at the bottom of the fascia probably mm -hmm. so we so that all will be lower mm -hmm. <clears throat> the majority of houses on the street are two story are two story mm -hmm. Do we have a streetscape? No, because it's not required for accessory structures. Just primary new construction. But because of the rhythm or the lot division on that street, and this is, I guess, technically a double lot for the street, is that what we heard? Yes, correct. I think that this starts to read because the roof line's different. I think they're differ differentiated so much that instead of paying deference to the historic structure, it just starts to read like another house on the street that you're filling in where you would expect to see a house with that rhythm of the lot size. I don't think I ever realized that it dead-ended. <laughs> Who knew there was a so It's a very there. unique street. And it does make for very tight configurations and when you're trying to accommodate <clears throat> again the pool, the driveway, the I, I think pushing it back helps it read like an accessory. Could I also ask you about the light pattern of the historic structure? Do you know if they were originally one over one? I don't know. But yeah, I um I looked at the photos. I it, I don't know if they originally were, and they are replacement windows, but I don't know if that's, they were replacing one over ones. I know there are other houses on the street with one over ones. So it would be appropriate, or you would, ex you could see that originally? Yes, you, yes, you could definitely see one over ones originally. Um, again, I thought on the accessory, it helped differentiate it as well though, by having a different light pattern. Thank you. What is the platting history of this street? What is that? I'm sorry? The, the platting history. Was oh, I, it, I don't really know. It's so unique. It is definitely unique. It's worth a drive down. Driven by it a million times. Yeah. And it's not a wide, the street itself isn't very no. wide, so you don't get expansive views down it. I nope. think that the street 
reads like the lots do and like <laughs> the aerial does. It's almost like it was another estate or something and everything was platted around it. I don't know. Were the the adjacent streets, are those mostly mid-century? There's more mid-century in the rest of Central Park, but no, I wouldn't say predominantly. I was just, because in the South End, I know we have like, a, I think it's Rutland. There's some oh. that, you know, mm -hmm. from the 20s, right. and that breaks up the typical plotting of the mid-century subdivision. Mm -hmm. Right, Rutland is similar, right, with its dead end like this, but I, I'd say um, this is a stronger mission influence street than Rutland. Any further questions of staff? Thank you. Thanks. Do we have any members of the public that wish to speak on this project? Okay, seeing none, we'll go into executive session. It seems like the primary concern is the tower feature. Yeah, I think so. I completely agree with um, Todd and the, uh, I think, another commissioner regarding the roof. I don't think the principal structure and the accessory structure should have this dramatically differing roof styles. It, it does read, you know, the lot is only 50 feet deep. So this would almost read as a another structure, but it should still contribute a little more than it does um, to the main structure. So I, I would just want to change the roof line. To a parapet. To a parapet. Yeah, and maybe like split, maybe this accent attic could be what it is, and the rest could be a parapet, or reverse that. Maybe the attic accessory is a parapet like the main house, and the rest is because they want to have that vaulted ceiling look on the interior, apparently. So I don't know how you feel about that, Kristen. I'd like to see it all be a parapet. Yeah, okay. I just think that with the proportion of that storage tower feature that, I mean, I'm visualizing it and I just don't see how it could look the way we would want it to, um, that the proportioning would be similar to other historic structures where you have different roof patterns. Are you comfortable approving it as a condition or do you want to see it back? I'm actually okay approving it as a condition. I think it's Agreed. pretty straightforward yeah. to change it to a parapet. Both roofs? Both. Okay. And then what about the smaller windows at the top? I mean, just the fact that there are windows. Well, with the proportion of it, I think you need something there. Yeah. I think I'd want the windows to match the main structure. One over one. one. Yeah. And maybe for the tower feature, they're smaller. Is that what you're getting at, Ms. Geyer? I don't know. I just like can't get past the tower element. I, I, yeah. I really associate it with a Mediterranean Revival style. I just, and this is an ad valorem application. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it works and I don't want to try to redesign it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's enough to change the roof. It just seems odd. I just don't think it's appropriate mm -hmm. for a mission style structure. And it, I don't like the importance that it gives to, a, to an accessory structure. Like that looks like it's an entrance to mm -hmm. a house. I think that's why it is reading is a separate primary structure too. Is a tower. Is a tower, yeah. Because I think if it was all just a hip roof, <clears throat> even it being different, if it was a hip roof 
and the primary is a parapet, I don't think it would. I don't think it would read the way that we're interpreting it as a separate structure, a separate primary structure. Excuse me. How much um, power does this design review have? Have there been a precedent to um, make a motion to approve the design with the parapet roof and elimination of the tower? Yeah. I think we can do that. What about the sliding door? Because usually we don't pay attention much to a sliding door because it's an accessory structure that usually is concealed behind the primary structure, but in this case is facing the street. Mm -hmm. I think maybe having them come back with uh, to show the parapet and some changes that we may could recommend tonight, I think would be advantageous. So do we ask them to remove the tower? Well, Mr. Murphy, you were saying that you think there may be an additional 100 square feet perhaps that well it looked as though the uh, if if the over if the overarching regulation is lock coverage it looks as though there's about a hundred and change square feet which is 10 by 10 room a um, hundred square feet their attic space is 175 so I think they should explore putting the maximizing the lock coverage and eliminating the proposed attic And then you want to see maybe, I don't know, French doors instead of sliding doors or? F French doors and the parapet flat roof. In the okay. entire structure? On the proposed addition, yes. What, what the no, what, what I'm saying, I, I don't, I personally don't have much of a problem with the hip roof. Um, but the tower, yeah, just on the tower, right? But, I mean, there are hip roofs, uh, properties around. Um, if they remove the tower, then yes, right? Shut everything with a flat roof. If we, if they keep the tower, at least the tower should have a flat roof. That's my opinion. But. That's interesting. So approve it as proposed without the tower no 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 I, what i'm saying i don't know if somebody some someone of you are proposing to remove the tower altogether and do the whole thing with a parapet roof and trying to achieve more square footage in on the ground floor that is an option the other option is to keep the tower, but at least the, the tower should have a flat roof. Uh, for me, if we were to do a straw poll, my, my contention with the application is the tower. What if the tower was a little bigger to that extra square footage that they would be allowed, make the tower a little larger, you could almost read as a second story addition to the accessory. Um, usable living space. Um, it might read a little better that way. The tower just seems a little small. Um, and then still parapet to match the house. I don't know if this is going to help the conversation, but an effort to move things along. Um, if we remove the tower element completely, I would be okay with the hip roof. If the tower element remained, I would want to see a parapet on everything. 
So I don't know if it sounds like we have a difference of opinions on the board if we want to give the applicant the option of how to come back. I mean, it's hard for me that I don't have a streetscape and I've never driven down the street. I could have done that in preparation. That's my own fault. But the streetscape, I'm just looking, I mean, how many other of these, it doesn't look like. There's not a lot of hips. I see gables mm -hmm. and I see flat asphalt. roofs. Yeah, asphalt shingles. And not a lot of accessory structures, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so <laughs> this, this would be the only house, right, with an accessory structure? No, I mean, there's a couple, but it's just, it's, again, one of the only lots that would have the space for them. Yeah. This one does. This actually came in from the board a couple of years ago. And this one does, too. I have driven down the street before, and in taking that context and consideration, I actually feel more strongly about having a parapet on the accessory structure as well. And it, it's not an option to have a full second floor, right? They don't have, they're not allowed that much square it footage. Sound like it. Yeah. I don't know, I, I'm kind of like all or nothing. Like either it's one story or like you can have a full second floor. It just seems not appropriate to have any kind of tower element. So I'm leaning towards just no tower, yeah. parapet roof. Find some other way to accommodate the storage. So is that approval with conditions or is that a continuance? I don't know, I don't want to hold them up, I mean, I don't think it's an anything major. Can we chat with the applicant? If they would be open to those two changes. Because I would also be willing to approve it with condition with those two conditions. Thank you for allowing us back because there's been some new topics that we would like to add to. Um, one was adding storage downstairs on and the ground floor level, which may be allowed uh, uh, up to 100 square feet before we max out the lot coverage, but it would ultimately reduce the pool. And that's a, a big <clears throat> feature that they're looking for, for therapy for their son. Yeah, right now, oh. the, you know, we're just, we moved from two city plaza and a condo with the pool and all those accessory things that were there available to us uh, during, right before the pandemic when we had an impact on this. My wife and I owned and operated a school for 30 years and it started to tank due to the enrollment at the, uh, et cetera, caused by the pandemic. So we quickly, fortunately moved from two city and sold our condo and bought a small house, uh, which we love. And we love West Palm Beach. We've been here 15 years. And my son is like the pseudo mayor of the city. If you've ever seen him in his wheelchair with <laughs> bubbles and lights and music parading around at every event possible. So when we got to the house, the, all the bedrooms are upstairs. It's very tiny rooms. His wheelchair can't even come in the house, so it stays in the van. So I carry him around the house. We have a chair lift that goes up the stairs to his bedroom. He spends most of his time in the bedroom or on that little balcony. So there isn't much for him. So we want to create a space that has the pool, which he used to love and is very good for his physically for his body, <coughs> and another area that's larger that a wheelchair could maneuver around in, and he can actually feel like he's, you know, a normal person. So that was our goal. Um, we would have loved to have attached it to the house and made the house bigger and done all these grand things, but we don't have the money for all that. So we're trying to, with the smallest budget possible, create a space that has an outdoor pool if we and the pool doesn't need to be big it can be small it only has to be you know 10 by 20 or something it's not going to be huge but the lots are very tiny on our street 50 by 50 is extremely small with all these setback requirements that seem to be more geared towards larger lots they don't work very well for our lots you'll you'll walk down the street houses are very close together some people have homes that have like there's one that has like probably four lots is one that's the biggest place on the whole street. But most of them are, and they vary from what ours looks like to uh, the ones that are probably built more in the 50s, not, you know, with the wood frame and the wood 
not not just stucco mission style homes. So there's a large variety. There's a, a rehab center at the end of the street where the cul-de-sac is. That's all a, a newer looking two-story um, rehab facility that uh, that people are at. So they're walking up and down all the street all the time, which, which is fine. They're not bothering us. But still, the, the goal was to create a space for my son to enjoy and for us to enjoy, of course. We're limited with storage because if you've not, if you've been in the 1925 homes, they're very small storage. We, I have a storage facility uh, uh, space that I have to rent every month and pay for off-site because of that. So that's why we wanted more storage. But we'd like it to be bigger. But there, you can't make it bigger on our property. We can't make a bigger place. Otherwise, it violates all the rules that we have. So I, I don't know how to solve the problem. And uh, I'm I'm happy. We like the architecture that we have. If it made sense to make that storage place have a flat roof, no problem for me. It doesn't bother me. Um, if it was all flat roof, if you really thought that looked better, I don't know if that it does or not. I think it looks kind of boring, but it's, it just looks like a, you know, a straight structure all across. Um, we could do that. Uh, just We just thought it would be nice to have a you know, a ceiling that, that looks a little bit different in that space. But it's all very small. It's very tiny. I mean, it's 460 square feet is nothing in, in compared to what I've seen on the screen today at the meetings. <laughs> Those are like mansions. So very tiny, very small. We, we're here. You know, we'll do whatever makes sense, um, and we'll comply with whatever you wish. I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm an engineer, but not an expert in architecture. And i um, happy to you know, entertain any ideas that you have that'll make it better. Because I want it to be the best possible structure that we can put on that lot and the biggest possible one. If I could have another room downstairs, I would love to. I mean, but I, I, we can't apparently fit anything else in but one room. And uh, we couldn't even have a covered area outside. We had to have the trellises. It had to be open structure because of the regulations or rules or whatever. So we had ultimately adding more anything downstairs reduces the pool and you start to lose the, the function of therapy. It's, it's a very tiny pool. It's all very tiny. <laughs> if, like. if I could suggest um, keeping the hip roof with the cathedral ceiling that they liked inside and that gives the barrel tile accent to match the existing home and change the tower to a flat parapet, would that possibly be acceptable? The windows could change to one over one pattern if that's more accommodating to them. I would need to see that come back because I'm not confident that it would look the way that we would need it to for Port Chalet. I certainly understand wanting to maintain the size of the pool. Have you explored reducing the size of the trellised area? Could you add on square footage there and relocate maybe the barbecue on the some other on the front? I guess whatever. What what side is that? That would be the north elevation of that building? Currently, there's no outdoor living space. So that feature was, I guess that's for the parents, <laughs> where the therapeutic aspect was more for Corey. Uh, well, just between the two structures, then you have a trellis covered yeah. area that's kind of nice. Uh, you could put bougainvillea on or something yeah. attractive, uh, which we already have on that one wall right adjacent to it, so we just continue to grow up over top of that trellis. Um, I mean, if you wanted the whole thing to be flat roof, I mean, I'm, it doesn't really matter to me if that makes sense to you. I mean, you're the experts on historic preservation, I understand. So if that's going to look better in your opinion, uh, and it solves the issue uh, related to the, the roof or, or the look, it's not really a big, big problem. I'm, I, I just don't know. My question would be, how high can that? Because mm -hmm. obviously, the higher it is, the more spacious it feels, even though it's small. So um, I would want it to to be as high as it could be, just so you, even though the room is relatively small, it feels bigger. So. Currently, it's a nine-foot wall with a cathedral. If we went to a parapet with a flat ceiling, maybe we go to 11 feet or 12 feet. Or to the same peak? I, I don't know what the, what is the, the peak highest. Like? The peak of the cathedral is currently about eleven and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's 
But that looks better, in your opinion, and fits more into matching the existing structure. Uh, I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Any further questions or discussion with the applicant? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are you still open to the idea of expanding the second floor so it doesn't look like a tower versus making the whole thing a second floor? Well, not a second floor, but making it appear more like a second floor than a tower feature? Yes, I'm still open to that idea. I just, it feels like a pop-up. It feels, yeah. it doesn't feel, I'm not averse to this need for storage. I think right. there just has to be like another design solution. I don't know what that is, but. I could try a motion to expand the tower feature so that it reads more like a second floor and have the entire thing be a parapet and French doors on the first floor. Would people be open to me trying that as a motion? Yeah, and <laughs> I, I mean, we it's have? up to staff too. Do you feel uh, I'll, I'll take your direction, I'll work with you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and is that a continuance or approved with condition? <laughs> Just trying to get some I, here. I, I think that you don't feel comfortable to approve it with conditions, right? Because they can try also. I mean, I, I you know that I asked the question at the very beginning, so I have a problem with a hip roof on the tower. I don't have a problem with the hip roof on the other part, but probably can be a lower slope, like four on 12, you know, and that will lower the reach a little bit, and that may change the proportions, you know, but the, all that needs to be tested. Yeah, okay, so did you have another comment before I try a motion, Mr. Murphy? No, I don't know. Do we are we okay with a sliding door? I mean, if they. I think French doors. I don't know if it's a wheelchair friendly. Too much, French but doors. yeah, but we can try. At least on this facade, mm -hmm. and they can leave the other uh, sliding. Right. That's true. Okay, I think I'm gonna try. Did you wanna, no, no I comments? Okay, I saw you like adjust, like. <laughs> I, I maintain that I don't think the accessory structure looks as though it's accessory to the existing on-site structure. Um, and that leads me to other problems. Let's start dissecting the parapet and the and the roof and the tower and the sliding doors. So I'd like to see the applicant come back and demonstrate to us that their proposal more closely resembles the principal structure of which it's ex accessory and let them explore the use of the doors and the windows and a combination of the tile and the flat roof let them find the inspiration in the principal structure and come back with us and convince us that the massing of this prop accessory structure is appropriate. Including the streetscape. Because I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced the tower belongs there at all. I agree with that. Would you like to make that a formal motion? So what I just said, uh, to continue <laughs> to the um, uh, one month deferral, do you understand the direction? Basically, try to reskin it to show that it really looks like it belongs on that site because as I go onto Google Street View and just look at the principal structure, it just doesn't belong. Um, it doesn't look like it is part of the same architectural family. 
So I'd like to kind of challenge you to show us that the massing works and your storage needs, but it more closely resembles a principal structure, which in and of itself is two stories and has different roofs and also has this terrace area, which maybe you incorporate, um, well, let your team come up with something. That's my deferral. So I'll second the motion to continue to next month's Historic Preservation Board meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Our last case is 2301-812 Canuga Drive. Hello. Good evening. Yes, good evening. The good um, news is we don't want to build anything and we don't want to add on anything. <laughs> my name is Mike Godro. This is my wife, Mary. <coughs> Excuse me. We currently reside at 812 Canuga Drive in West Palm Beach in Flamingo Park, which is a great area. The reason for our here tonight is that we need a side set variance. Apparently what happened was that the house was constructed in 1947 and the footprint of the house now is four inches into our neighbor's property line. We can't pick the house up and set it back. So what we need from you guys is this side set back variance to say that it's okay for us to do whatever we need to do with, with the property. Um, we've inherited the property in 1994. We became residents in 1995. <coughs> we purchased a vacant lot just to the east of us. And <coughs> we, in 2011, we brought the two lots together. And for purposes of taxes and homestead exemption. Now fast forwarded to 2022, we put the lot, the vacant lot up for sale. We came down to City Hall to try to separate the two properties so that we could sell the vacant lot. That's where we ran into the problem, <coughs> excuse me, that we could not move forward with the sale of that property because we need the variance on a neighbor's property side. So. That's where we stand with this, and uh, we're hoping that uh, our presentation allows you to put forth this, this variance. Okay, thank you. That's mm -hmm. really, I mean, the house is, it's not the, the house, the issue isn't the vacant lot. Our house is four inches too close to the property line on the, on the next house. Uh, we talked to our neighbor immediately when we found this out and she wrote a letter and said that it was not an issue for her. Um, we, don't, we don't know what happened in 1947. Uh, we do know the original owners and builders of the house. They were our friends and they are the people from whom we inherited the house. <coughs> uh, we've been coming to Flamingo Park since the early 70s. Uh, we love it. It's a great neighborhood. Um, and I, if we could buy a foot from our, a foot of land from our neighbors, we would, but there just isn't land to buy. So anyhow, so that's about it. We're assuming that probably there was a uh, building code back then, uh, the possible inspection back then. If that was true, yeah. why was it missed? Yeah. So we're paying for the sins of our fathers back in the early days. Anyhow, so that's about it. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions of the applicant? Okay, thank you. Frederick Mittner presenting case 2301 for a variance for a side and cumulative side setback for 812 Canuga Drive. The subject property is on the south side of Canuga Drive 
just west of Lake Avenue in the Flamingo Park Historic District. The home that's situated on the western um, half of this lot was built in 1948 in frame vernacular. And as the applicants just indicated to you, it was not originally this lot. It was a separate lot in the middle. This vacant lot actually belonged to this lot to the east. Um, so again, these were never joined because of between inheritance and purchase, uh, this situation has just been this way since, for approximately uh, 10 years or so. So the request, because they would like to split the lot and go revert back to what it was previously, is requesting the setback. You're required to have a five foot minimum and a 15 foot total. They have 4.65. Because of that deficiency on that side, it just adds up to 14.67. They're fine with the 10 on that side. So they're seeking a 0.35 foot and 0.33 foot ma uh, maximum variance. Um, this is the property here. This is where it is just a few inches over the side setback, setback requirement. Again, it's not a, anyone else's property line. It is just too close to the property line by today's codes because again, they're trying to split the lot. Everything has to be in compliance before they can proceed with that hence the variance. This is the vacant lot over here, and <clears throat> they're trying to address what is currently considered a legal nonconformity. Uh, this is the survey. Uh, chimneys are allowed to encroach, so, uh, so that's not a problem. It's the 4.65 over here, but again, they do have at least the minimum of the 10 feet over here. And then this is, again, in the vacant part of the lot uh, and the house. And we reviewed the zoning and land development regulations uh, for variance standards, section 9438D6. We do feel that it meets all 10 of those. Uh, this is not uh, due to any action of the applicant. Uh, the house was obviously built in 1948. Uh, it's not uh, a detriment to the community. It actually is in keeping with the lot pattern of the neighborhood. Again, as you can see, uh, there's it's an anomaly to have a large lot here and here, but typically on Canuga, you just have these smaller lots, which is how, what this was before. Um, and then the only condition we have is that when the lot is split, that their driveway that you can see here is three feet off the property line, because that would be it. Uh, and that'll be addressed via the lot split application, which is a staff review by zoning review uh, through a, uh, a planner in the zoning division. Um, so that that's in compliance as well. Um, so again, we are recommending approval. Thank you. Any questions of staff? I, I have a question, Frederick. So um, I did drive by um, this property just to kind of look at this driveway situation. And if they remove any portion of that existing driveway, you're, I don't know what the dimension is because it's not clear on the survey. Right. But it doesn't. It doesn't look as though um, they'll have to remove the wall and everything else. Are they willing to do all of that? Or unfortunately, they're required to. So it is ten feet back here, and okay. then it does angle out a bit. So it's certainly wider than ten feet down here. I don't know the exact dimension. Okay. Um, but it will again need to be three feet. Three off feet from the, the side. Mm -hmm. right. So they'll, they're okay with doing all of that. Uh, well, it's a requirement. I sent them the staff report with that as a condition. So, okay, so I, I guess I didn't understand. Your current, when oh, Lexi was reviewing your right. lot split, your current driveway is too close to the vacant lot. Okay. You just have to come back in so you're three feet off the property line there. So you're going to have to narrow the driveway. Yeah, but again, that is something that they'll need to do to come into compliance. And there's a variance needed for the new, which would be the new lot because it's only 50 feet. No, the new lot does not need a variance. Obviously, any new construction will have to come in and get your approval. Right. But uh, no. The they won't need a variance for a 50 foot lot? No. Okay. No. Right. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Frederick. Todd, that's where I landed. I questioned why the driveway variance wasn't folded in onto this application. I think that if there's documented evidence that this property was built as only lot 
lot 10 and not lot 10 and 11 and they acquired 11, I question the need for the setback variances. That being said, I fully support the application at hand for those setback variances. The property was clearly built um, as it stands today. Um, likely the driveway as well, but that's a that's on their plate. But um, you know, this these lot lines, the legal description is lot ten and eleven of block six. Block six was platted as fifty foot wide lots. This seems like a uh, relative uh, the simple application in my in my mind. And in the future, we're hoping um, once Article Two gets amended, I know. <clears throat> Angela has been working on that for a, a bit, um, that some of these administrative variances can be incorporated. Yeah, absolutely. This, this, you know. Frederick, I have one more question. So it, it appears that almost every home with a driveway on this street is just like this. Yes. Could, I mean, it seems to be the rhythm of the street to, to have your driveway right on your property line. Could we approve without that condition? That condition? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe at this level, but when they come in for the lot split, I don't know. I, I think that's when it'll raise the issue. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe we can work with them at that point um, at the lot split, and you leave it all. It, either way, it'll be it'll be addressed one way or another. Okay. So if you choose not to do the condition today, I think that's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further questions? Thank you. Any members of the public that wish to spe speak on this item? Okay, seeing no, none will go into executive session. Can I make a motion? Yes, I think there's variance language. Yep. I move that the Historic Preservation Board grant application number 23-01, a request by Michael and Mary Goodrow for a variant from section 94-81 B2 of the Zoning and Land Development Regulations, which requires a primary structure to have a five foot minimum side setback and 15 foot cumulative in the historic single family high density SF14-C2 residential zoning district at 812 Canuga Drive. The applicant is requesting a 4.65 west side setback and a 14.87 cumulative, thus granting a 0.35 foot and 0.33 foot setback variance. The motion is based on the testimony presented along with the application submitted and the staff report, which constitute competent substantial evidence. The Historic Preservation Board hereby makes findings of fact that each of the 10 criteria in Article to section 94-38 D6 have been met for the variance. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Approved. Thank you. With that, can we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn tonight's Historic Preservation Board meeting. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you.